All right, when you're making a website, oftentimes you wanna have some sort of video on your website. Maybe you wanna have a video background for your homepage, that's very trendy. Or maybe you wanna have some video showcasing your product that you want people to buy. In any case, adding a video to your website will make it look very nice. But of course, when you're adding a video, you need to optimize it because this video right here, well, let me just show you what I have here. I have a video called Skyscrapers. And it is a very nice video of some skyscrapers going by. That is a fine looking video. But the problem with this is it is 27 megabytes. And I don't know about you, but I don't want my visitors to have to download 27 megabytes of video just to see my homepage. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how you can optimize this, bring it down to a reasonable file size while still keeping the quality good. Because of course, if you have a video on your website, you want it to look nice, that's the entire point. And today we're going to achieve all of this and more with this program called FFmpeg, which you may have heard of before, but it's going to be a command line application that you can install with your favorite package manager. So it's going to be in all the official repositories. So just pick whichever package manager that you're using. It is as simple as that, install that. And once you have it installed, I will show you how you can use it and the most basic usage will go something like this, ffmpeg-i, and this is going to be your input file, which we already said is skyscrapers.mp4, and probably the most common optimization that you would like to make to some video is just to change the resolution. So this video is originally 1440p, and I'd like to get it down to 1080p, so I wanna make the resolution 1920 by 1080 pixels, and we can do that by passing in this dash vf flag, this is basically shorthand for saying uh, add this filter. And the filter that we're going to be adding to this is scale. So we'll want the scale to be 1920. That is going to be how many pixels across that I want this video to be. And then you can also pass in the height here. But to be honest, you probably just want to keep the aspect ratio the same. You don't want to have to do the math. So you only really have to type in the width and then you type in dash two. And this will automatically set the height based on the aspect ratio. And the negative two is just saying that we want to keep the height uh, even integer. So we don't want it to be 1081 pixels in height. We want it to be 1080 pixels in height. Just because if it's an odd number, you can run into some issues with some video players. So that's the only reason I'm putting negative two instead of negative one. And then you would just type the output file right here. This is the file that we wanted to create. So let's say we want to make output.mp4. And one more flag that you can optionally add in here is dash an. What this flag will do is it will remove all the audio information in this video file. So for this specific video, it doesn't have any audio. And I don't want it to have any audio because let's say in this example, I just want it to be a background video. Of course, it's not going to have any sound. But even if your video doesn't have any sound, then it may still have some audio information. So dash an will just strip out all that information and no additional metadata or anything about audio. So that will save you a little bit on your file size. And let's just run this and see what happens. Now this will take a minute or two, so I actually already ran this before the video. So let's just see how it looks. Let's open up the file browser, go to input. And as you can see, this 27 megabyte video has been reduced to 9.1 megabytes, which is already a very nice savings, but we can do better. Now there's a few different codecs that you can use whenever you're using FFmpeg. And a video codec is basically what compresses the video down. And there's different kinds of video codecs you can use. Some are more modern than others, and some of them will be more efficient than others. But the most common video codec for the web is going to be H.264. So in this command, let's also add dash C colon V. And this is shorthand for allowing us to select the codec. And the default codec is going to be libx264. And this is going to be the H.264 video codec and as you can see, this is going to have the best compatibility with every single browser. So almost every browser can support this just fine. And so at the bare minimum, you will want to have this format when putting your videos on the web. And there are some other formats that I will show you. For example, H.265, which is more modern, but as you can see, it has a lot less support. It's actually only available in Apple devices. And there's one more that I'll show you, VP9. And this also has pretty good compatibility but there are a few browsers that it doesn't work in. But let's start with H.264. And so this is not going to have the best compression. The file size is going to be a little bit bigger than other ones, 
but this will be the fallback in case your users are using an old browser that doesn't support a newer codec. So first things first, let's just try this one. So that's what this libx264 is. And then we'll also want to pass in the quality. So we're going to type in dash CRF. And this is going to accept a number from 0 to 51. 0 is going to be the best quality. 51 is going to be the worst quality. So we want something kind of in the middle there. And so you can play around with this a little bit. But for me personally, something around 24 is going to be pretty good. It, the file size is not going to be too big and it's still going to be good quality. So this is what I would recommend. And finally, let's just pass in one more option. It's going to be dash MOV flags and then fast start. And this is basically just going to help your videos load faster for the web. It will kind of push some information to the beginning of the video. So whenever your users first start the video, it's going to load faster than if you didn't include this flag. And we can go ahead and run this. It'll take a couple of minutes, but it will give you something like this. So the other video was nine megabytes and we've gotten it down, down to 7.7 .7 megabytes. That's already a lot better. That is about a third of the file size of the original. But of course we can do even better. And so next up after H.264, let's go over VP9. And so the VP9 codec can only be stored inside a WebM video format. It can't be used inside an MP4 video format. So we'll just be saving it as a WebM file format. That's not a big deal. So we're going to change the codec to dash C V and then lib VPX dash VP9. That is going to get the VP9 video codec which is going to be more optimized than the H.264 video codec. And of course, we'll pass in the same options here. We're scaling to 1920. Uh, we can leave out the dash move flags fast start. That's because with VP9, it's already going to be optimized for the web, so you don't really need to add anything additional. And of course, you would just change the output to WebM right here. And finally, we'll want to add dash CRF like we did with the other one to set a quality for this one. So this one is on a scale from 0 to 63. So we can change the quality a little bit. So for me personally, I use a CRF of 40 for this one. And at least for me, visually, it looks the same as the previous one. So the quality is still there. But let's run this and see what it looks like. And so this one is going to be 7.7 .7 megabytes, but the command that we just ran is going to be only 3.8 megabytes. So that's already a big savings. And if we open this up, the quality is still going to look pretty good. I have no complaints about the quality. If you look really closely, it's not going to look as pristine as the original, but for a video on the web that's going to be in the background, I think this is more than enough personally. And let's do the final file format, which is going to be H.265. And to be honest, this one is a little bit optional. Like I said, this is only available on Apple devices. So let's see, H.265. And that's just because this video format is not royalty free. So basically Apple is the only company that's willing to pay to use this in their software, but it is going to be even more optimized. Let's just bring this up. And as you can see, it's down from 3.8 megabytes to 2.9 megabytes. So this one is optional, but if you want to get a little bit more for your Apple customers, then I would recommend doing this one as well. And so this command is going to look similar to the H.264 command that we ran. The only difference is, of course, we've changed the codec to 265. We've changed the CRF to be 28, a little bit higher, and the quality will look similar to the H.264. And we've just added an additional flag here, dash tag colon V, HVC1. And that's just so that these will work on Apple devices. If you leave this out, it may not work. Everything else is the same. And so you can run that and get this right here, which is going to be the smallest file size and of course, remembering all these commands is going to be a big headache. So what you can do to make your life a little bit easier is you can write a script like me, or you can just borrow my script. I'm going to have a link in the description for this. But basically what this bash script is doing is you pass in a few arguments and then it will do all the work for you. So it will run all the commands that it just told you with all the flags that it just told you. And of course, this is not set in stone. You can change the CRF values if you want. These are just my personal preference. You can play around with them a little bit more if you want to, but you can run the script like this. I would just type op video. That is the name of my script. You can name it whatever you want. And then the input file, which is going to be skyscrapers.mp4, the resolution, so 1920 pixels across, and then the directory where you want the output to go. So in my case, I made a new folder called videos, and that is where they will go. 
once they are all done transcoding. And you can just enter this, wait a few minutes for all of those to encode, and you now have three videos ready to go. So that's how I do all of my video conversion now. It is very fast and easy. And so we can go in here, open up our file browser, see all the videos that it has created. And last but not least, let's actually put them inside uh, HTML files so you can see how this looks. I have an index.html here. And the way you're gonna to wanna to put all these files is like this. So you're gonna to wanna to have a video tag and then three separate source tags or one for however many videos you have. And so of course we have the best optimized video on top here and the lowest optimized video on the bottom. So it will try to read this file. If it can't, then it will go down to here. And if it can't read this, then finally it'll go down to the fallback right here. And you would just put the type of the video in here. So this is an MP4 and then the codex, just so that the browser will know which video to get. And so for me personally, it is going to get the WebM video encoded with VP9. As you can see, this is the only one that is loading. It is not loading the H.265 because I'm not on an Apple device. And your browser will be smart enough to get the appropriate video. And that's about it. So there are more things that you can do to optimize the videos even further, but this will probably be enough for most people. So all of the commands that I gave you, say in this script per se, these are designed to give you the best quality with the least amount of file size without taking too long to encode. So if you want, you can get an even better quality with some additional options, but just keep in mind that it's going to take even longer to encode all of these videos if you do something like that. So just encoding all of these videos for a 15 second clip, this normally takes about seven minutes to do all of these. But if you follow this article, I'll leave a link to this in the description. This is a very well-written article that helped me a little bit in making this video. He personally recommends passing in a dash preset flag and setting it to very slow. And what this will do is it will tell the compression to really take its time whenever it's compressing the video. And so you're going to get the best quality but very slow does live up to his name and it takes an extremely long time to compress your video. So you can add that flag if you really want the best quality. It all depends on if you have maybe 30 minutes, an hour to compress all these videos. And you can go even further. I'll also leave links to more of these in the description. But if you want, maybe you can encode these with a two pass encoding method. In my experience, that gives you an even smaller file size. So you can do more to optimize it even more, but it's totally up to you if you want to go the extra mile. For me, just these commands are enough, but just know that the options are available to you if you really want. But that's all there is to it. Now you can make websites and have your users enjoy your websites loading a lot faster than before, because just as important as having a website that looks good is a website that works well. Never sacrifice aesthetics for a miserable user experience. And hopefully this video helped you put some videos on your website the right way.